Hello, this is Amanda with Music Game Club, and today is the how to play Magpie Melodies. So this is kind of a composition sight reading game, and your students will also learn to identify the tonic, median, and dominant in the key of C major. First, though, I will show you everything you get with the printable that you download. So here you see our game board. They have a large starting spots, and then it goes 1 through 30. Now I will say the gameplay usually does not extend to 30, but it's more of a point system and whoever gets furthest along wins. We of course have the instructions here and we have right here the melody card song list. I will get into that in a bit. There is our colorful, beautiful success poster. We have eight different magpies playing pieces. There are guide cards, which helps remind the student what is a tonic, median, and dominant. Or if you go by other terms, then those are also available for you. And finally, we have 64 very colorful melody cards. And each of these cards are color coded. So there are eight of each color. There are eight yellow cards. Yellow is the melody for London Bridge. There are eight yellow green cards. Yellow green cards are, are you sleeping? Red cards, Mary had a little lamb. Purple or violet are rain, rain, go away. Green is the bridal chorus. Indigo is row, row, row your boat. Orange, ode to joy. Blue is hot cross buns. And I think I got them all. I went out of order. So these can be used for multiple different gameplays, but I will have more videos on those coming up later. So first off, you're going to shuffle all of your colored cards together. Each player picks a playing piece and you set them in the start. And then you start building melodies. So there are two levels you can play. There's basic level and there's upper level. So the difference being for upper level, you can let your students rearrange the cards to create melodies how they think it would sound best. And for basic gameplay, they just pick them and they lay them in the order that they pick them. Also for upper level, you can add to the point system. If you are comfortable with this, then if your student creates a two measure sequence, they can have a bonus two points. Or if they create a two measure repetition, they can have bonus two points. If they do a question and answer, they can have bonus five points. That's more if you as the teacher wants to do that. If not, basic gameplay, totally easy. So I will show you the basic gameplay and you could take it from there if you want to do a little bit more upper level. You're going to start with flipping up three cards that your students can choose from or if they want to choose from the draw pile, they may. So a few things that they can think for to work toward if, they, if you want them to is having the very starting pitch and the very end pitch, if those match, they get bonus points. And then of course, if a median is on the board, it gets more than a tonic, but then a dominant would get more than a median. So, there are different ways the student can work through it. So the players just play one at a time. They either pick a card from here or they draw blind, which I'm gonna do that. So this is immediate. It will, player one will move through, move forward three, one, two, three. And then let's pick this one that's here. Also immediate. Now you're gonna replace the card instantly. As soon as something's drawn, it's gonna be replaced. So they move forward three medians on the board. So um, if you're playing the more advanced style where you have repetitions or whatever, then your student might want to get this and they would get bonus points for that. I'm not going to play with bonus points right now. I'm going to play it more of the basic style. So also a median player moves forward three, one, two, three. Now I did pass up this bug. There are two bugs and two sticks on here and they mean different things. The bug is like a snack. It's like a boost forward. If you land on the bug, you get a bonus two points. If you land on the stick, that's like the magpie got distracted building its home, so you're gonna stop there. You still play, but you don't move forward. Okay, player two gets to go, and we're gonna choose immediate, it's more points. So one, two, three, and I'm gonna choose another repetition one, just because. And that one's also immediate, so you get to move forward three. All right, so now here, neither tonic 
nor median, nor dominant. So players might not actually ever pick that one if they're going for points. So this player, they can either get a tonic or nothing, or they can pick one. So I'm going to go for that. And they got nothing. So it did not work out very well for them. This one, I'm going to say we'll pick the tonic. So that way it kind of has a nice little phrase. Now, if you have younger students, they're not going to pay attention to things like that. I personally do pay attention to things like that. So this one's a tonic. It moves forward one. Now they're on the stick. That means that next turn they get to play, but they don't get to move. So player two's turn. And do they want the tonic or draw? I'm going to draw. Oh, that was a good choice because that is dominant. And that moves forward five. One, two, three, four, five. Now it is player one's turn again, and they actually can't go anywhere, so it actually doesn't matter what they pick. Um, so here they would be for melodic purposes rather than for point purposes. So let's just say we'll do this. And then player two gets to go, or we're going to go for the dominant. Move forward five. One, two, three, four, five. They get a bug. That means they boost forward two more. Okay, player one is going to want the dominant. They get to move forward. One, two, three, four, five. Player two is going to pick the other dominant. One, two, three, four, five. All right, player one, do they want a tonic, a tonic, nothing? And by the way, you can teach your students that in the key of C, that's a super tonic if you want to. They're going to, we're going to pick one. And they get a tonic. So they move forward one, but that was a good move because then they moved on the bug and they get two more. All right, player two, uh, we're going to go with luck of the draw. We got a median. So we move forward three, one, two, three. And then the last card for player one. All right, so we started on a median. So if we could end on a median also, that would be bonus three points. There's no median on the board, so we're going to do luck of the draw and see what we come up with. And it just so happens that it's median, so we get one, two, three for being median. Then we get bonus three because the excerpt starts and ends on the same pitch. So it's also median for player two. So we're going to go luck of the draw. And it was not median. Actually, that's a very bad ending. <laughs> But um, they actually don't get to move forward any. But player two still won because they had so many dominant. So that's the general idea. And for your younger students, you would just play through it that way. You're just teaching them to recognize the tonic, median, and dominant. But for your older students, and so this is what I would do, this is where it gets very interesting, you can sight read through it. So I would sight read through these and then make musical choices. And don't just do it, oh, this is the first card I drew, it has to go in the beginning. Well, maybe that sounds better as the fifth card or the sixth card. And so I would use this for my older students to help them really think about the choices, the musical choices they're making. And then it's not only about the points, it's also about the musicality of it. Also remember for your upper level students, you can add the points for like two measure sequence or two measure repetition, question and answer. So then they could be on the lookout for those very specific cards and they might start picking cards that are no points, but they have musicality in them. So this game can expand to a little bit more upper level players, or you can keep it basic for your very beginning students who are just learning the notes. And those students also who are just learning the notes, this is a great way to say, hey, this this is called an E, even if they've never seen it. And then they have to match it. Maybe you can have like your flashcards up or something like that to help them understand that's an E or if you do solfege or, or whatever. So a lot of uses for this game. And I will go into even more uses in other Magpie Melody videos. There is also this activity sheet that the students can color after they draw lines to match whether or not the starting pitch is tonic, median, or dominant. We hope you and your students enjoyed playing Magpie Melodies. Remember, you can send home the activity sheet that they can do to get extra practice. Also, celebrate with the success poster. If you post pictures online, please tag us at Music Game Club on TikTok, Instagram, 
YouTube, and Facebook. Have fun.